All right, so in this video, we're gonna look at generating some terrain derivatives from a DEM. Okay, so here I have a DEM. This It's a two meter resolution DEM that I derive from, from LiDAR. Um, so it's a pretty decent um, image. Um, in a prior video, I looked at calculating some derivatives from this using the raster functions. So if we go to our analysis and then raster functions, you can calculate some common things in here like a slope shade, aspect, slope, contours, um, shaded relief surface, so on and so forth. So real quick, I'm just going to create a shaded relief surface that we can use for reference. And that's probably an extreme ramp for something, this an area this small. So let's do, I'm just going to do like this ramp. Okay, let's run that. So there we get a nice hypsometrically tinted hill shade visualization. So I just wanted to look at some other um, options here for generating um, terrain derivatives, just as some other examples. Okay, so first off, if you're not using the raster functions, if you go into the toolbox, followed by spatial analysts, and then the surfaces toolbox, there's a bunch of options in here. So we have aspect, contour lines, surface curvature, hill shade, slope, so on and so forth. You also can calculate some other derivatives just using like raster math. And a lot of these rely on moving windows. So let's, for example, calculate a measure of slope position. So to do that, we're going to first calculate the average slope within a moving window. So we're going to have to go into the neighbor, or I think it's neighborhood, yeah, neighborhood tools, and we want to do focal statistics. And then we want to take our DEM, and we want to calculate something. So I'm going to call this, we'll call it mean dot or we'll call it mean elevation.img. Do save there, and we'll do a circular radius with um, a radius of, we'll just do 11 uh, cells, and we're going to calculate the mean. So I'm going to hit run there. And what we get back is something that looks a lot like the DEM, but it's just been averaged over this uh, moving window with 11 uh, cell radius. And then to get a measure of slope position, we can just simply take that result and subtract or subtract it from the original value. So we'll take our DEM. And then we'll subtract from that the mean. And that's going to create what we call slope position. So I'm just going to call it sp.img. And we'll hit run. There we go. So we get this surface back. So areas that have a low value means that the, the center cell in that moving window had a lower value than its neighbors. So those are generally going to be like valley bottoms, you know, these river incisions. The high values tend to be closer to ridges or slope breaks, so like here. Um, so the basically it's kind of a measure of, of local topographic position or like ridge versus valley. So that's, that's an example of another output you can generate just with raster calculator. All right, um, let's do another one. Let's do now. We'll calculate, I believe, well, I got to do this with um, zonal stats again. So we're going to go to um, vocal statistics again. And this time, we're going to calculate not the mean, but the standard deviation. So we'll do standard deviation, and we'll do the same thing. We'll do a circular window. Um, actually, let's just make it a little smaller. We'll do a seven cell radius. And we're going to call this output standard dev dot img. And then we're going to run. And then let's, and then we'll take the square root of it. 
So we'll go into raster calculator and do square root, which I'm not sure what the function is for that. So we'll just find it in here. Float, there it is, square root of that. And we'll call that rough. Let's call R pH dot IMG. So this is basically a measure of topographic variability or topographic roughness. This rescales it a little bit there. So um, you know, areas where there's more variability, we're seeing higher values, and areas where it's more flat, we're seeing lower values. So it's basically a measure of local roughness or variability. Um, another common one is topographic dissection. And to do that, you basically, again, need to do and what we're interested in is topographic dissection, which is this thing. Um, so elevation minus min divided by the range. And that's uh, topographic incision. So let's get rid of that and see if we can basically do that calculation. So first thing we're going to need is in our focal window, we're going to need to calculate the min and the max. So we're going to go in here and we'll do, again, DEM. We'll call this one max.img. And we'll do a circular window with a radius of 7. And now we want to do the max. And run. So that's our max in a window. And now we'll just swap this out for minimum and we'll call it min and run so that's our minimum and then to do the actual math we'll do rash calculator we take our cell value which is the original DEM subtract from it the minimum in the window so minus minimum and then we basically divide by the range There we go. So divided by max minus min. So let's think about this. If we had, if we were at the cell location with the maximum value, it would be max minus min over max minus min, which would basically be one. And then if it was the lowest value, then it would be 0 minus min, blah, blah, blah. It would be 0, right? So um, basically the low values are going to indicate more dissection or incision. High values are going to be like less dis dissection. And I guess we should name that. We'll call it dis.img. And hit run. OK. So that's an example of. Uh, uh, topographic dissection index. All right, um, I guess to finish up, I wanted to do like a view shed analysis. So let's pick a location. So first I need a point. So I'm going to go into um, create feature class. And we'll, now we can do it in the database there. We'll call it VP for viewpoint, and it needs to be a point, and we want to have the same coordinate system as the map. Run. Okay, and then let's put a point somewhere on the map. So we'll go to data, create, point, and let's pick a location that's probably going to maybe be down at a valley bottom. There we go. So there's our point, and we'll do a save. And now we'll go back to our, let's just type in view shed here. And spatial analyst, view shed. And we want to do our input will be our DEM. Our vantage point will be that point we just created. And let's name this vshed.img. And we'll have it create one of these two above.img. And we'll run that. Okay, and this spits out, let me get rid of this first. So this above 
this is basically what could be seen from that location just based on topography. It's not taking into account, you know, like buildings or trees or anything else in the way, just the topography. So that's what's visible from that location. And then this other output, this above output, what that represents is the area that you, the height you would have to add at each location for it to be visible from that location. And the areas that were visible, they aren't included, so they're just null. Um, so that's a visibility analysis. So this is a few examples of some different terrain output that you can generate from a DEM using just simple um, neighborhood analyses and raster calculations.